Hey folks, welcome to Relevance for Today. I'm Steve Lewis. It's great to be on here. It's great to have you listening and watching my latest podcast as I continue with the love movement. It's going to be fantastic. It's a great, great message. It's going to continue to teach you and me how we can learn to love as Jesus Christ did and how God did for us so that we can be amazing vessels for the kingdom and unity will be back again in the body of Christ. Stay tuned. You're going to love it. Okay, folks. So here we are. We're back. Um, I've got a couple cameras set up today, so I'm going to try some different angles. Uh, but I'm going to be reading out of the new inductive study Bible. Great Bible. Uh, it was on CBD. You can see it right there. Um, I picked up the hardback. And then, of course, as you guys know, you can buy the cases for them and throw them right in the case. This Bible is amazing. Um, this is the English Standard Version. Great Bible. Good stuff. I'm going to tell you why it's good. I'm going to just read a little insert real quick. Today's message might be a few minutes longer, but that's okay. I mean, hey, we all know it. We sit back. We'll get on YouTube. We'll watch a funny video. The next thing you know, we're watching two funny videos. And the next thing you know, we're watching 10 and there's half an hour. So let's face it, folks. It's only a few minutes to sit back and listen to me or watch me. Why not? Right? Here's something about the Lord. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. So here we go. The new inductive study Bible, discovering the truth for yourself. You can get this at CBD. Um, it's published by Harvest House Publishing. Okay, so right here in the front, I want to read this to you. I've got my little pages marked with my little paper money thing there. Okay, so it says, Inductive study, a method that brings you directly to the Word of God apart from another's understanding or interpretation of the text. And it involves three skills, observation, interpretation, and application. That's pretty cool. So for example, observation, you see here, I've got them all highlighted right here. I'll show you on this one. I know this camera's kind of dark. Uh, I am going to have to go ahead and lighten that up. Um, but we've got observation. It teaches you to see precisely what the passage says. It is the basis for accurate interpretation and correct application. Observation answers the question, what does the passage say? Then we have interpretation. Interpretation answers the question, what does the passage mean? And then lastly, application answers the question, what does it mean to me personally? What truths can I put into practice? What changes should I make in my life? So this is awesome. Um, it also has a lot of, uh, I'm not sure on this camera, it also has maps. Uh, you've got little nuggets in here talking about uh, the temple, the tabernacle, um, Herod's temple, the temple on the mount, shows you diagrams of how it was built, uh, pictures of it and so forth. So it's really good, the history of Israel, and it goes through and it teaches you a lot of different things. Um, and also, I don't know if you can see those dark lines on the book. I don't know if you can see the, yeah, you can right there. See those dark lines in there where all those are markings of either the book where it starts the chapter and so forth. Um, but it goes through and they'll tell you, like, for example, the book of John, it tells you the history of John, you know, the usual lingo it tells you the history, tells you, uh, who the author is, uh, gives you a timeline. This one gives you chapter themes. You can write them down on there. I don't know if you can see that on there. But uh, great Bible. So with that being said, let's dig right in. The New Inductive Study Bible. Okay, so today we are going to go ahead and uh, continue on with the love movement. Great movement. Um, Holy Spirit's got me on this topic about love. It's going to bring unity to the body of Christ. We just have to surrender ourselves as men and women. We have to surrender ourselves as the body of Christ and just go ahead and say, you know what, we need to love on one another, we need to show forgiveness for one another, and we need to get this thing 
taken care of so that we can be the true body of Christ, just as the body of Christ walked in the book of Acts. I mean, just like Luke recorded, they were working it. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to read out of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And um, very short passage of scripture, of course, it's just uh, one verse, but it has some great nuggets in it. So here we go. Romans 8, 28. And this once again is the English Standard Version. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Now, this is one of those verses that gets misread sometimes. Um, people will use it for all kinds of situations. Something will happen to someone and or it may be good, it may be bad. And then they'll say, you know, um, God works all things together for good. And leaves it at that. But the key things in here is the beginning says, and we know for those who love God. Okay. Right off the get go, it tells you that. Who are we talking about? Those who love God. Things will work together for good. So you want to know who loves God. If you love God, you want to know just to double check and make sure you do. You come back here to Matthew 22. We'll go Matthew 22. I have it marked here. And Matthew 22, verses 36 and 37 says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So what does that tell you? Who loves God? Those who love him with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. And you'll know that deep down inside if that's you, because you'll spend time with the Lord each day. You'll know, you'll dig into the word. You'll just have God on your mind all the time. Um, there's no um about it. The bottom line is, hey, those who love God, if you truly love God, you'll be in the word, you'll be thinking about him, you'll be praying, you'll be talking to him, you'll just be just loving on the Lord. So when it says that, and we know for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, the other part of this is for those who work together for, not for, I'm sorry, God all things work together for good, but it doesn't mean it's going to be sugar candy and strawberries and bananas and everything's going to flow all smooth and there'll be sugar frosted Wheaties and all kinds of delicious things. It does not mean that you're going to step out in the red carpet of the Lord is going to roll out for you. And every time you go to do something, it's going to be perfect. You know why I know that and I can say that safely is if you take a look at the life of Joseph sometime refresh. It's good to go back and read about Joseph. It's awesome. You go back to the book of Genesis, read in chapters 37 through 50, and it talks about Joseph, his life, his history, how he went from being that young man who shared his dream. Brothers wanted to kill him and threw him in a pit, left him for dead, sold to the Midianites and friends. And the story goes on and on. Accused of trying to put the moves on one of the leaders, sent to prison, got in prison, spoke over a couple guys into their lives and interpreted their dreams. Then he was forgotten by man, but not by God. Then he went and he talked about Pharaoh's dream. And then he was placed where God was was training him to be through everything he went through. Did he work everything together for good? Yeah. You know, just like Joseph told his brothers, what, what the enemy meant for bad, God meant for good. It's the same thing. The trip is not going to be easy. Just because it said everything's going to work together for good does not mean it's going to be smooth sailing. But God loves you so much. And knowing that you love him, he's going to Put you through some things that's going to help a little iron sharpening iron, a little rough around the edges, a little sandpaper here and there. You know, it gets a little uncomfortable sometimes when we're going through some 
trials and tribulations, but at the same time, you stay focused on your calling. God has a purpose on your life. You love on the Lord. You stay focused. Just like I told some friends the other day, stay focused. Just stay focused. Don't grow weary in doing good because God is going to, when the time comes, he's going to command a blessing. So once again, this is about love, doing the love movement thing. We're talking about that. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there because I could continue talking. There's so much that could be talked about. I mean, you look at all the people, you look at Paul's life, you look at Shad and Brack, Meshach and Abednego. They love God so much that they had faith to go through the fiery trial. Daniel, same way. All these guys, God did work everything together for good for them, but they had to go through some bumps and bruises here and there. So back on the love movement, there's going to be times, there's going to be trials. Stay focused, continue to not only love on one another, but this one's more about loving on the Lord. Love God the way he loves you and sent his son down, sent Jesus Christ down to be a sacrifice for you and for me. So with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and pray. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another chance to share, to reach people out there. Heavenly Father, those listening to the sound of my voice or watching this podcast will get something out of these messages. I try to keep them short, and I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do that. But Heavenly Father, I just ask that you just encourage each person to dig into the word, to read more about your word, to learn how to love you as well as for me as well to just love you so much that it's in my heart, soul, and spirit constantly, daily. Heavenly Father, bless all those who are going through trials and tribulations right now. Heavenly Father, speak to them in a way that they will know that it's you walking beside them, helping them through it with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Lord, it's all about the love. Help us to learn how to love one another, to learn how to love you so that you can continue to put things in place for us so that we can walk the way we're supposed to be walking. Unity in the body of Christ will be once again restored and we can take this world by storm in a loving way. And I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bless each and every individual hearing the sound of my voice. Amen. There you have it, folks. There goes another part of this series. I'm enjoying it. I hope you are too. Remember, you can subscribe on iTunes, uh, all the different places. I'll put them up there on the screen. But uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share it. The more subscribers we have, the more people that are being reached. There's no money involved. It's all about being a blessing and being a vessel so that others may be reached so they can walk in the calling that God has on your life just like I'm working on walking on the calling that God has on my life. Love you all. Love one another. Forgiveness is key as well. This unity thing is going to work. We just have to learn to love, forgive, love the Lord. Watch the blessings take place. With that being said, God bless you all. Have an amazing day. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.